All right, welcome back and thank you for watching. Today, I'm gonna to go through the CertMaster CE method for renewing your Security Plus certification. Uh, we're gonna go over how to purchase it, go through a little history of CEs versus CertMaster CE. I'll go through the training material and assessment structure only and give you a couple tips. And then we'll answer the question, can I just use ChatGTP to help me cheat my way through this? Uh, as an, and as a disclaimer, this course uh, is not a giveaway. We're not trying to give you any uh, material here. Just trying to really make help you make a purchase decision uh, before you uh, drop 199 bucks to see if this is the right method of renewal for you. So in the store, it's pretty simple. You go to the store, you go to the continue, continuing education, CertMaster CE, uh, click on that and then buy now. And then you link your candidate ID and last name uh, to this purchase. And that is how they are able to credit your renewal once you complete the assessments at 100% uh, completion. Okay, so uh, then after you've made that purchase, you'll actually be able to see the old, if you have one, uh, CertMaster and then the new one that you just uh, purchased. You have access to both of those. But then really, how did we get here with these cert masters? Just a quick history. Back in like the 2009 or 10 range, uh, these certs were permanent. I know Network Plus was, I think Security Plus was, but then they added the three-year renewal period. Uh, so uh, up until 2020, the only way to renew was through 50 hours of credits. That's training and, and things like that. And then pay the $150 worth of fees. That's $50 per year. Then in October of 2020, they rolled out the 601 CertMaster CE, and that rolled it all into one package. $199 included everything, 8 to 10 hours, in and out, and you had one year to complete. And then they uh, came out with the 701 on this three-year cadence uh, back in 2023. So here's an example of how that cadence plays out with my renewal cycle. As I mentioned, I used 50 hours of CEs to renew up through uh, the 2018 a time frame, which was actually renewing through 2021. And then uh, in the period ending in 2021, I used CertMaster CE 601. And then for this most recent period, I used 701. So you see the note down here, you can't use 601 twice. So for example, during this three last three year period, period number three, if in September of 2023, I had said, hey, I know my cert's coming up for renewal. Let me do CertMaster. I could not have done it because the only course available was 601. And I had already used that for this prior renewal period. You can't use the same re you know, one to renew again. So I actually had to wait till October. And I did. I ended up you know, doing it in February. But I waited until after October uh, to do the uh, renewal with 701. Okay, so what's the training material structure look like? So it's divided into five knowledge domains and you must complete each training uh, domain uh, in order to get to the assessment. So what does that mean? That means you have to, at a minimum, flip through each page and you have to apply confidence rating uh, to your knowledge of the material, sort of a self-assessment, self and then you're able to click continue. So if you want to just thumb through, you can just thumb through. You don't have to read it or you can read it. Uh, the course material, the do five domains, this just gives you kind of a relative sense of how long the content is. So domain four, for example, is 160 pages if pasted in MS Word. And I know that's true because I pasted it in to use the read aloud feature via Word, which just kind of worked better for me than trying to do read aloud uh, via Edge. And read aloud works better for me than reading pages to myself, uh, just from a training perspective. That's just my uh, personal approach. All right, and I mentioned this, but the requirements, you have to pass all the domain assessments and you have to score 100% on each domain assessment in order to pass that domain. Here's what that looks like. So 100% score is required. Um, you can take time, take a break between questions. You can pause the assessment. Um, it is timed, but there's not a limit on it. And then you can, of course, retake. I'll show you that in a moment. But here are the five domains blanked out because I don't want to give away any information about what the domains are. Um, here's the questions, you know, number of questions in each domain. And here you can see, um, in this case, I've passed all of them, but domain number four. So here, domain number four, in this uh, screenshot, I have it paused. So there are 29 total questions. I paused it on question 20 and see that I was only at a 95%. 
So by pausing potentially after each question, you can gauge whether you've gotten any wrong at that point and then decide whether you're just going to kind of bang through the rest of them real quick or whether you're going to really try to answer the rest of them and then retake the test and just over and over and over again until you get 100%. But the pause button, super helpful so you don't, don't, so that you don't get to like question 29 and realize you got question one wrong. All right, so a little bit about the questions. Uh, most questions are just A, B, C, D, pick one. Some are A, B, C, D, pick two or three. There's even a few of those. There are no E, all of the above uh, questions. Uh, you will, if I think probably most people are retaking a couple times before they pass each domain and you will notice duplicate questions uh, with each retake, but there are also many new questions. They have a very large pool of questions. Um, and a note about these duplicates, any duplicate questions are always identical. And the answer set for each of those questions are identical. Same order, same wording, same everything. Uh, but what they do is they sort of obscure the, uh, the, the, the questions with using this in a large company, da, 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 wording. In a medium-sized company, da, da, da. And that really sort of like jumbles it up and makes you forget, uh, sort of get confused uh, a little bit on the uh, the question ordering and that sort of thing. Okay, so here's what it looks like, you know, say if you get one wrong. This happened to be a pick three. Um, so what they don't do is they don't show you the right answer. Of course, in this case, you know <laughs> that right answer is A, B, and C, just process of elimination. Uh, but they, typically they'll show you the answer. They show you what you got wrong, and then you have to determine, okay, well, of the other three left, if it's a pick one, which one is the right one, if I should happen to see that question again. So that's kind of how that works. They're never going to give you the answer. All right, so if you fail an assessment here, you can see 82%, and this is per domain, you can reset just that domain and keep retaking that domain over and over and over until you get 100%. And that's sort of how you do that, go through all um, of the domains, all five domains, and then you're uh, done with the uh, cert master and get your certification. Uh, so here's what it looks like once you get to 100%. I blanked out the domain names here, so it's 100% correct. So it's 100% done and 100% score on each of the domain tests. And once that happens, you get a little pop-up says, congrats, we just renewed your uh, CompTIA certification. So then you flip over to cert metrics and here's what that looks like. You see now, at least in my case, it shows renewed through 2027, June of 2027. It had previously said 2024. And as a note here, this renews your Network Plus and your Security Plus. And then closing out here, um, can you use ChatGDP? I plugged a couple of questions in, and for me, it was like 50-50. They were not giving the, the best answer. Um, now, there were some cases where ChatGDP gave an answer, and I thought it was the right answer. It was the answer I came up with, uh, but CompTIA said it was something else. So that's kind of a disagreement about uh, content, really. You know, I was probably wrong. I don't know, but some of the answers I sort of disagreed with. Um, they... You know, this whole chat GTP thing might actually explain why some of the questions are actually kind of difficult, especially domain four. Um, and the, the questions aren't really directly searchable in the training material either. Uh, there's a lot of, hey, here are the circumstances. What's the best answer or what's the best two answers? Uh, so you, in, in the language, it's not like common sense. It's not like they give you, you know, three off the wall answers and one, you know, slam dunk or two off the wall and two maybes. Uh, you really have to think through a lot of these. They they blend a couple answers together to the point where it really makes you think. So then what about search engines? Well, from what I can tell, it does appear so there's a large answer database out there on these search engines. Uh, my opinion, that's unethical and not recommended uh, to do that. Uh, so wrapping up here, general issues. I've had some issues with just trying to reset my password. Uh, and the store password seems to be different from the learning password. Uh, that that really was confusing to me. And then the cert metric password seems to require your login ID, and, which is your comp TIA ID instead of your email. So just a couple weird like navigation and logon things. But overall, it's a pretty good course. I will say the 701, I think is a lot harder than the 601 uh, to get through, but it's totally doable. This is doable. I'm not a cyber guy and I made this happen uh, in two days and I was working one of the days. So, you know, this is kind of a, you know, side project kind of thing. So if you have any questions or if you want to beat me up in the comments for, you know, having to do retakes, have at it. But if you have any questions about CERTmaster CE, post them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. So thank you for watching.